point, if you would pull up the screen, please. The Lord gave me a message entitled, when you pass through. When, not if, when you pass through through. I don't know what you came in here this morning with. I don't know if you've been struggling with something. I don't know if outward circumstances have been pressing upon you, but I have a word from the Lord, and that word is when you pass through. You're going to get over something today. It's time to cross over. It's time to leave whatever it is behind and cross over into a new place that God wants to bring you into. And I'm going to be coming from the book of Isaiah, starting in chapter 43, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, starting in chapter 43, verse 1. But now, Everybody say, but now. but now. No, say it with some authority. But now. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord that created you. Created you, Wade. He created you, Robert. Let's make this personal today. But now, thus saith the Lord who created you, O oh, Jacob. That he that formed you, oh Israel, so he formed you. He already knew what was going on in your life. He already knew in 2022 what you were going to be facing this morning. And he says this, fear not, Aaron, for I have redeemed you, Sabrina. I have called you by your name you are mine shelby when you pass through the waters see you're not going to stay in the water <laughs> it might be a little troublesome right now but the word of god says when you pass through the waters i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. Some of us feel like we might be tossed to and fro right now. But the Lord says they're not going to overthrow you. They're not going to overtake you. You are mine. I have sealed you with a promise. Look, I know I'm loud and I get excited. But that's because this becomes life. This becomes strength. This becomes who you are. You have to recognize this is God's word to you. You take it personal. This is mine. I'm going to hide it in my heart, and I'm going to guard it with all that is within me because God has given the promise to me. And when you walk through the fire, look, he's telling you, church, you're going to go through these things. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom and Ethiopia and Saba for you for you so if you'll pull up that object lesson Aaron I was wondering what to preach on a friend of mine who I've been helping lose some weight comes to my house and he says to me he comes back to the gym the next day and says Angela your dog is so fat and I was offended and I was like, well, I know he's a little big, but, and he said, no, you need to do something about the health of your dog. You help all these people lose weight and get healthy. By the way, I'm a personal trainer. And he says, but your dog is fat. And I stood there convicted. I, I love my baby. I like to give him treats. I like to cuddle with him. 
But you know what? I stood there and I said, you know what, Lord? I want to help my dog. I acknowledged, I know it's silly, but the, look, the Lord can use a donkey. He'll use anything. And, he, and, I, and I said, you know what? I have to acknowledge there's a problem. So I don't know what it is in your life. But look, if you think you're perfect because you got saved, you're wrong. So that's pride. Just want to tell you now. We are not perfect. We will never be perfect till the day of his coming. So there's some things he wants to work out in us. And you know what? It's okay. So one, we need to acknowledge, God, I have a problem. I need you to fix it. So I wake up on a Saturday morning, which is my only day that I get to do any kind of sleeping. And I said, you know what, Lord? I'm going to get up and I'm going to take Samson for a run. And I get there, and I pack the book bag, and I put water in it. And I said, all right, Samson, we're going to go do this. And we haven't ran in a while. So I said, we start off, and we're running. This is where we're running. Now, I want you to see something. You see that red leash? The blood of Jesus Christ has marked you as his. That red leash, I want you to think about it. I am Samson's master, and I have a hold of that red leash. He can only go so far, okay? And we're going on a journey. When we got out of that car, I said, okay, Samson, here we go. But I got a hold of that leash because the goodness of God is running after you. The master has a hold of you, even though sometimes you might feel like you're doing it on your own. So we start off, and he's happy. Here we go. But he didn't know that we were about to do five miles. Sometimes we don't know. (laughs) We don't know what God's about to do in the journey that we're about to, to run on. So if you would hit the play button. So here we go, me and Samson, he's excited, and we're going. Go to the next picture for me. And as we're going on this journey, now we hit about 3.5 miles. Notice the red leash is still in the picture. The master is still there. But let me tell you about the 3.5 miles. It was hot. And Samson kept looking at back at me with that tongue hanging out his mouth. Like, are you serious? We're still going? You ever look back at God and say, are you serious? We're still traveling through this trial. Are you serious, Lord? I still got to go forward. I still got to go to that job. I still got to deal with that person. Oh, God, I'm waking up with it again. It's still there. Are you serious, Lord? I'm hot. I'm tired. But you know what the Lord showed me as we were running? There was different terrains as we were traveling through it. Sometimes the sun was legitly beating down on us. Like you felt the heat. And sometimes we feel the heat of the trial. We feel the heat of the situation. But within the next couple of minutes, all of a sudden we were in a shady area. Look, God's going to give you a time of refreshing. He's going to give you a time of rest. And I looked at Samson, and in those times when we were running, he was looking at me, and he was looking a little better. He's looking a little better, yeah. I could do the shade, Mama. I could do the shade. And we're we're running. What's the next picture, Aaron? And there's water. When he seen that water, I swear he could have took off. He was like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. But look, that's times like today in the, in, when the Lord is moving in worship and we sense the power and the presence of God moving in our lives. And we're like, oh, yeah, there it is. There it is, Lord. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, keep coming. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. See, God sent his son to die for you and I on Calvary that we would be able to go to heaven. Yes. But he wants to give you power now. 
on earth to walk out life. Life is not going to get easier, but you're going to have power in you that can cause you to walk above your circumstance and your situation. And that was Samson right there. Ooh, give me the water, mama. And that's how we should be with the Lord. Lord, give me your freshing. Oh, Lord, give me your spirit. If you have not been baptized with the Holy Ghost and you don't understand it, that is okay. But you should ask them, God, if this is real and this is for me, God, baptize me with your spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because I want whatever you have for me. I didn't understand the baptism with the Holy Ghost. Not at all. I tell this church this story all the time. I literally, when I first time heard the baptism with the Holy Ghost, I said, I am in a cult. Get me out. And my mama said, nope. You stay right there. And you know what? When I got filled with the Holy Ghost, it's not just about speaking in tongues, y'all. It is about a refreshing. It is about when you are in that trial. And you ever been in a trial, you have no idea what to pray whatsoever? Like the pain of the trial could be so deep, so deep that there is nothing that you could say. And you just start speaking in tongues. Because the word of God says that you are praying the perfect will of God. At our church, in, in, at Evangel Temple, our pastor is preaching on the battlefield of the mind. And I thought this was really cool, and I'm going to share this. They did a study where they hooked someone's brain waves up to when they started speaking in tongues. Now, y'all know we think a lot. Anybody else a thinker in here besides me? Okay. And the battlefield rages in the mind while you're going through the process, while you're going through life. And he said when they hooked it up and the person started speaking in tongues, the waves settled. It was like as though when God was speaking, his spirit was speaking to God, the brain waves rested. I said, oh, I need that. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my mind be like ding, 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 ding. I could sit in this church and think about 16 million things. I'll be down the street before you know it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And when I start speaking in tongues, it's, it, you're, you refocus. Look, and I'm not, look, it does not make you, let me say this because a lot of people feel this way. It does not make you a second class Christian if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Okay, it is something you should desire. It is something that you should say, Lord, I, I want what you have for me. I, and I don't understand it. It's okay to not understand. Be real with God. I don't understand it. But God, I hear it. And I want it. So God, do it. <laughs> do it. And he will. He'll do it for you. And you're going to need it. You're going to need it. I'm going to tell you, you're going to need it. And it, during the journey, so now we got Samson in the water. And I'm like, look, baby, we got to keep going. The car is, like, down there. So now we keep going. Come on, Aaron. Four miles. There we are. But Samson is no longer wanting to be in the picture. He's like, I can't believe I'm still going. You ever look up in the morning and say, I can't believe I'm still going. But God says, I got you. We're on mile four. We're almost there. We're almost past this thing. We're almost at the end of this thing. We're coming up on the finish line. Just keep on going. Just keep on trusting me. The master has you in his hand. He has you in his hand. So let's get to where we, where we end. We got to the end. And he was done. <laughs> and, but wait, I want y'all to check this out. The leash is still in the picture. <laughs> and uh, you know where I was? I was sitting on a swing above him. 
The master has risen above your problem. Tuck yourself under him. And guess what Samson did? He said, we done, mama? I'm laying down. Rest. So many times, so many times we try to figure it out. So many times we try to fight it out. So many times we say, I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be angry today. Boom, and there it is. I'm, I'm not going to struggle with this today. I'm not going to struggle with this today. And you know when you, what you do when you do that? You focus on that instead of focusing on the master. He wants to refocus us today. And you can rest under the shade of the master. You can rest under the shade of the master. Today I want to encourage you that there's a process of traveling through. Samson and I were in a process of traveling through. And what was I doing with Samson? I was developing his endurance. God is developing a people that will endure till the end. God said, if you endure till those who endure till the end shall be saved. He wants to develop your trust in him. He wants to develop your faith in him. He is using whatever it is to develop your character. Your character is important. I'm not saying that we're not going to fail, because we will. But you make sure if you fail, you go and those that have seen it, apologize. Especially when we proclaim ourselves as Christians all the time. Because you know what that shows them? It shows them humility. And it shows them that Christians actually struggle. But it's okay. Because he said, while we were yet sinners, I died for you. His death isn't just for one time. His death is for the process of development. Saying, okay, now this area I want to deal with. Now that attitude I want to deal with. And he is the master designer. So he's going to design your river. He's going to design your um, sea that you're going to cross. He's going to design the fire that you're going to go through. And you say, well, what kind, of, what kind of God is that? Because God is in the business of developing his people and for us to receive his power through the process and you know what happens when we do that? We, we get to know him. He's in the relationship business. So he allows us to travel through some things. Look, you're going to travel through it anyway. <laughs> you're going to go through it anyway. Better to go through it with the master. <laughs> Better, <laughs> better to go through it holding to the nail-scarred hand of our Jesus, holding to the word of God and him revealing his power to his people. So I, I love this because right here where he says, but now, thus saith the Lord your God who created you, O Jacob, that he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Right before that, God's people were a train wreck. They were in idolatry. They were sinning. I want you to think about this because it hit me really strong. So many times our sin and our failures and our shortcomings overwhelm us to the degree that we don't feel like God loves us anymore. And we feel like we have fallen so far away from God that there is no reason to even show up in his church house. There is no reason to even call on his name. There is no reason to even pray or worship because I have struggled with this for so long that I don't even think that God loves me anymore. But I want to tell you this. In this verse, the verse before it, his people were a wreck. And he said, fear not. Fear not, thus saith the Lord who created you. I already knew you were going to go through this. I already knew you were going to 
I struggle with this. I already knew I was going to have to break this cycle in your life. I already knew that your shortcomings was there. I already knew the way that you were going to think about it, and I want to change it. I already knew. Bring all your failures. Bring your addictions. You think that in the church we don't have things? You've got it wrong. If you walked in the church and you think that we should be perfect, you got it wrong. Do not look at other people because we do not serve man. We serve the perfect God. We serve the perfect Jesus. And I'm telling you that's why a lot of people leave church. Because they look at people instead of God. We're here the same way that you are. For the same reason that you are. We need help. We need hope. We need healing. We need deliverance. We need it. I need it. I need it. See, what Pastor Matt and I do and Danielle and Naya and all the worship team and the words and all, they're gifts. They're gifts given to us. But we still got to walk it out. We still got to live. God didn't call us because we were perfect. Thank God I'd be in trouble. (laughs) Lord, help me. Ask my best friend or my mother or my husband. Not perfect. But God is perfect. And his blood, his blood chases you down. And you could say, I even blew it this morning. Can I be honest? I usually am. I used to go into church high. My mom, bless her heart, would bring me into church and I would sit there trashed. But the Lord was calling me. He was speaking to me. Somebody said to me one time, I can't believe they didn't kick you out. I said, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. God, they didn't kick me out. You know why? Because it was the goodness of God that was chasing me down. Your thing doesn't have to be drugs. It could be a bad attitude. It could be how you treat your spouse. It could be how you treat your kids. It could be pride or self-righteousness. It could be you lied about something. It does not have to be this big grand manifestation like I had. But nobody's better than me. And I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. The Lord said, I leveled it at the cross. I leveled it at the cross. And look, I like this. Israel is God's people. This is the cycle Israel, we are usually see Israel go through. This is what they were going through before this chapter. Israel chooses to serve God. I think you're in this house this morning because you have chose to serve God. Well, then the cycle goes on. Israel falls into sin and idolatry. Okay, can I get a witness? Because I know that we've all fallen short of the glory of God, because that's what my Bible says, that we all fallen short of the glory of God. And then Israel becomes enslaved and bound to that thing. We can be, as children of God and believers, enslaved by something. It does not have to be something that was grandiose. It could be unforgiveness. It could be grief. It could be pain. It could be unbelief. I don't just I just don't trust the Lord in this area. And we can come become bound to that thing. And enslaved by it. God's not gonna do it. God's not gonna do it. God's not gonna do it for you. God's not God is not a partial God. He doesn't just answer answer Pastor Matt's prayers. He answers mine too. Praise God. And he answers Robert's. And he answers Bella's. And he answers Aaron's. And he answers Amanda's. He is a answering God. He doesn't decline your messages. When you come to him in faith, 
He says, what can I do for you, my child? What can I do for you? And I love that because, look, what your focus is, you become enslaved to. So Pastor Matt was talking about a bond slave. Your will swallowed up in the will of the master. That's the way it should look like. But sometimes we become enslaved to anxiety. We become enslaved to depression. We become enslaved to old temptations. And I want to say this because I was talking to somebody and I feel like it needs to be taught in the church. Temptation is one thing. It's always going to be there. We live in a fallen world. Let's just get this. We will be tempted. So when you're tempted, don't start beating yourself up about being tempted. And you know what else? The emotion of the temptation is going to follow it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The temptation is there and that old emotion that went along with the temptation is going to follow it. But God was tempted. Christ was tempted and he did not sin. So let me tell you this, God has given you that same gift and ability through the power of the Holy Spirit. He had said, look, Naya, you're going to face it. I actually allowed a design to tempt you that you would learn how to be an overcomer of that thing. And I have not just said overcome it by willpower. I have given you the power by the Holy Ghost to overcome that thing. But, but, it, but it's not gone, Pastor Matt. I'm still tempted. It's been 12 years. It's still there. Let me tell you something. The enemy is not a respecter of persons. I'm going through a trial right now, and the enemy has been in my ear saying, you should just go shoot up. And I'm like, yeah, right, that's a good one. Right. But that doesn't mean that the emotion that goes along with me wanting to be that to the trial to subside. That's why we do stuff. Because we don't want to travel through it. We just want to block it. And look, you don't have to do drugs to do that. You could do that with lust. You could do that with, with, you could do that with anger to try to control the situation. I'm just going to get angry, and everybody around me is going to know it. I know that all too well. So is my husband. Lord bless his heart. But you try to control the atmosphere, but you become enslaved to that thing. And that thing becomes oppressive. But now it's got a grip. And it's going to take the power of God. Look, when I seen Samson fat, I said it's got to change. When you see that your focus has been on the wrong thing, you need to repent, to acknowledge it, to say, God, there it is. There it is again. I know that this is not of you. I know that this thing has enslaved my heart. It has enslaved my mind. It has enslaved my every waking be being. It has affected my relationships with people. It has affected my children. It has affected my home. But I don't want it to be there any longer. God, I cry out because you have given me the power to walk through water. You have given me the power to walk through fire. You have given me that power. So Israel repents. God comes and judges it. I love this, though. He judges it on the blood of Jesus. See, because when you're a believer, he's no longer judging you on you. He's judging you based on your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. So he comes and he says, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. I see it. I know it needs to change, but not guilty. You are not guilty. You are not guilty. You don't hang your head down any longer. You are not guilty. You are not guilty. Look, when he tries to roll out that red carpet of all the things 
that you have done wrong, it's covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. And he just washes it away. Glory. I don't remember what movie it is. I think, I think it was Cinderella. Maybe not. Snow White. I don't remember. But there was, there was a, a dustpan. Y'all know what I'm talking about with that broom that would go behind and what was it, Cinderella? And it would, it would wipe up everything that would be in its path and it would totally even take away the path. Dust up the path. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He removes even the path that you used to be on. He removes every piece of debris that used to come after you and come that way. He'll even take away the emotion of it. Let me tell you, he will take away the emotion that follows the temptation. You might remember it, but it will have no hold on you any longer. And how does that happen, Angela? By surrendering it to him. A constant, constant surrender. God, there it is. There it is. I'm walking. There it is again. I'm walking. I'm believing. I'm trusting. I'm traveling through the development process of my faith. And there is deliverance in Jesus' name. That's God's people. That's us, y'all. That is us. But God wants to break the cycle. He wants to break the cycle in the church. He said, he said, but now. I'm going to say this today. I don't know what you walked in with this morning. And I don't really care to know. Because it's none of my business. That's business between you and Jesus. But he is saying this, but now. Today is your day. Today, whatever it is, I know you're like, I probably, I've heard this a ton of times. Well, you know what? I would get ready and expect God to move. And I would say, you know what? This could be your day. And you don't want to walk out that door with that thing hanging over your head any longer. You don't want to walk out that door with that struggle. Trust the process. It was this point in time. You know, trusting the process. I deal with a lot of people in their weight, and they always come in the gym, and they work out one time, and they want to be skinny. <laughs> and then they come back to me, say it's not working. I said, good try. I said, what are you eating? Well, I had mac and cheese. Oh, the other day I had a corn dog at VBS. I had some chicken, though. Oh, but that ice cream. I'm like, it's not working because you're not working it. You're not trusting the process. Well, let me tell you, sometimes it's not the first time we bring something to the Lord. Sometimes it's not the second time that you bring something towards the Lord. <laughs> sometimes it's not the third some things go on for years, but you got to just keep trusting the process. Look, if you don't show up back in the gym the next day, you're never going to yield results. I just want you to know. If you don't show up in the presence of God the next day, you're not going to yield results. You're just going to, for lack of better terms, stay heavy. God wants to make us fit for the kingdom. Okay, yeah, he wants to do it physically, but he wants to make this fit. He wants to make my heart fit for the kingdom of God. He wants us to keep coming. He wants us to eat of that which is healthy. What are we partaking in? And I'm not just talking about what we look at. I'm talking about what are we thinking about. Forget about the outward manifestation. Forget about what is going on in here. What's going on in my emotional state? God, I want to, God, I give you this anger. I give you this self-loathing because I can't stand myself. Can't stand what I have become. But God says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. That means that he shed his blood for you as an individual 
as an individual. So his people were walking around in sin and total defeat. But God said this. Thus saith the Lord that created you. Oh, Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver. God said, there it is, right there. I want to change it. I want to change it. Who created you, oh, Jacob? I love this because you know what? It represents the struggle. He said, I'm the Lord your God, oh, Jacob. So many times we feel like God throws us out. You know why? Because people do. But God doesn't. He doesn't toss us to a side in a struggle. He doesn't toss us to the side when we fail. He doesn't toss us to the side. He said, I am the Lord your God. I keep my covenant because I shed my blood. And I have redeemed you. I have bought you with a price. I have called you, called you mine. I have, oh, Jacob. He wasn't Israel yet. Get it? <laughs> so many times we walk into worship with our head, heads down, or we're like, oh, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy. And he said, I am the Lord your God of your struggle. I have redeemed you. And I like this because Jacob was left alone with God to wrestle through the night. If you're toiling, if you've been praying with some, for something, and he said, let me alone, the day breaks. And Jacob held on and said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And you know what the Lord did? He touched the hollow of his thigh, and he crippled his hip. Sometimes God don't answer <laughs> The way that we think he needs to answer. But you know what the Lord showed me this time when I read it? i never seen it before. He changed the way that Jacob walked. We've been walking after some things that just ain't of the Lord. We've been toiling with some things that just ain't of the Lord. Look, 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 it's okay. Don't be like, oh, man, she's getting on to me. God wants to touch you and change the way that you walk. Change what you go after. Change what you listen to. Change what you look at. Change what your responsibilities are. Change what your focus is. He wants to change you. He wants to change the way that you're leading your family. He wants to change the way that you're leading your children. He wants to change some things about us. So he touches the hollow of his hip and cripples him. See, there's some mindsets and some fleshly ways that need to be crippled today, that need to be done away with today. And God said that he, the day breaketh, and he's going to do it. He's a day-breaking God. I don't know about you, and you need a breakthrough. He wants to do it today. Today is the day of the breakthrough. And we're, tra we're traveling through this, oh, Jacob, and he changes his name to Israel. He says, who formed you now, oh, Israel? Now he's speaking to the new man. Pastor Matt talked about it. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. One of the lies the enemy used to use on me a lot when I first got saved, still some, is that you are the same person. And I used to say I was a better sinner than I was a saint. I used to be like, I was good at that. I'm not so good at this Christian thing. But God wanted to change my heart. Yeah, I was a good sinner. But God wants, he's a good saint. He is the goodness in you and I, not us, not we ourselves. 
And he says, look, I'm going to change your name. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are dead. Behold, all things have become new. That means old things have passed away. When that thing shows up, it's dead. When that thing shows up, you declare it dead. No, that struggle is dead. No, I am not going there anymore because I am dead to that thing. I am dead to the way I used to talk. I am dead to the way I used to deal with people. I am dead to that thing, to the way I used to think about others and myself. I am dead to that temptation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you. That word called, say, I am called. That means he called you out to encounter the supernatural. He has called you out to encounter the supernatural power of God. I love this. It reminded me of the disciples. Matthew 4.18 says this. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting their net into the sea, for they were fishers. They were doing what they knew to do. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straight away let their nets, left their nets and followed him. He said, I have called you, Naya. Follow me. That word follow, if you are not a follower of Jesus Christ this morning, I want to encourage you to give your heart to him. It will be the best decision you ever made in your life. Because right now he is saying, I have chosen you. Even though you might not have chosen me, I have chosen you. And I have known you and I have formed you. I knew you while you were in your mother's womb. And I have called you by name and I want you to follow me. And that word follow is an imperative word. Remark, that means it's an authoritative and a command. It's essential. It's urgent. It is not a question. It is not up for deliberation. He is saying, look, it's urgent. Follow me. It's imperative. Follow me. And you know what they did? Straight away. That means immediately. Look, the Lord ain't looking for you to to just say, oh, I'll wait till I get older. Oh, I'll wait till I get one more hit. Oh, I'll wait till I go to one more place. Oh, I'll wait, I'll wait. They said straight away, immediately, they left their nets. They forsook their nets, their old way of being. They forsook it. They laid it aside, it says, and they yielded up their will. That's exactly what Pastor Matt was talking about. Forsake that which has been causing death in your life and in your family. Lay it aside by the power of God and follow him. It is not, it's not, it's an imperative statement. It's a command. God himself is saying to you today, follow me. But now, follow me. Leave your net immediately. Leave that way of life right now. You don't know what tomorrow may bring. You don't know what tomorrow may hold. And you are his. He sealed us with a promise and by the Holy Ghost has given us a down payment. I love this. Isaiah 49. See, he says, you are mine. Isaiah 49, 16 says, behold, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hands. Hallelujah. I have graven thee. What do you guys think that means? That's about the cross. I have graven thee on the palm of my hands. I was at VBS this week, and I seen a woman do this. And I want to encourage you today. I thought it was really cool, and I'm all about the object lesson. So she, she held it out, and I was thinking about the cross. She was teaching about the cross. And she took some nails and she said, what was Jesus held to the cross with? And it was nails. And what was our sin held to the cross with? Nails. He has graven thee upon thy hands. And thy walls are continually before me. That means your very being is continuously before him. And when he was being nailed to the cross, 
he thought of you, said, Robert, that's your sin. Naya, that's your sin. Sabrina, that's your sin. Wade, that's your sin. Aaron, that's yours. Leah, that's yours. Miss Angela, that's yours. Pastor Matt, that's yours. Danielle, that's yours. Angela, that's yours. Rich, that's yours. Chris, that's yours. It's yours. I nailed every single sin and failure to the cross. It's yours. It's for you. You are mine. You are mine and nothing, no height nor depth nor principality nor power, nor things present, nor things unseen can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. The devil is a liar. He will make you feel small. I remember that movie. It was like, itty, bitty, itty, bitty, bitty space. Oh, that was Aladdin. If you don't let your kids watch those movies, good. But that's what he said. He was stuck in the lamp. And God said, I have made room for you. I have made room for you at the cross. There is not one that I will not take. Listen, Paul killed Christians, y'all. Let's think about that. If Paul was outside, blew up a church, and then walked into ours, ooh, how will we treat him? Paul got saved. He wrote most of the New Testament. Y'all know Moses killed someone too, right? David was an adulterer, and he killed someone too. Think about these great men of God. God said, you are mine. You are mine. You don't know what God's going to do with someone. You are mine. You are mine. Be careful. Be careful what you say. Be careful who you reject. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful because you don't know who they're going to become. You don't know what kind of testimony we're being on this earth. We are vessels of his glory. We are vessels of his honor. The kingdom of God is in us. And he said this. He said, you are mine and nothing can separate me. You out of my hand. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers they shall not overflow you, and you walk through the fire they shall not be burned. Neither shall that flame kindle upon thee. Time and time again God shows his faithfulness. When you pass through, that word through means cross over. Jesus is saying to you this morning, follow me, your name. It's time to cross over. It's time to lay aside your net. It is time to yield up your old way of life and handling things. I have a better way for you. And I'm not just talking about an unbeliever. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those of us who have been walking with the Lord for years and years and years and years. That maybe we got a little too comfortable. Maybe we got enslaved by some things. Maybe we've been dealing with something. You know how church folk get? We get fat and sassy sitting on the pew, listening about Jesus all the time. Oh, I listen about Jesus. I pay my tithes. I speak in tongues. I dress real nice for church on Sunday morning. But do you know him? And not just know him once. Do you know him now? Are you following him now? It's an imperative command now. Follow me continuously. Your walls, your very being should always be before me. I, I've crippled the way that you walked, but I want to change it again and again and again and again. And you're going to pass through some things. I love this. Y'all got to let me preach here. Because on the Red Sea, when they were coming up to the Red Sea, listen to this. It says, 
right before the Red Sea opened, they were entangled in the land. God delivered them from Pharaoh's grip. And they walking in the wilderness, and they got entangled in the land. That means they started being involved with some things of the world. Look, we live in this world, but we're not to be of this world. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect because I don't do this all right. But God, but God, he's saying, do not be entangled again with the things of this world. Right there. Do not be enslaved. When you fall, you repent. And then it says this, they were shut up. In the wilderness. That means they surrendered to the wilderness. That word shut up means they surrendered to it. Now think about that. They started getting entangled with that thing again. It started having a little bit of power over them again. And they said, you know what? I just quit. I get, I'm giving over to it. I'm, I surrender to it. And right there, right there, Pharaoh said, let's go get them. They ready now. They got entangled again with the land. They, they surrendered to the wilderness. They surrendered to the struggle. It's time to go get them. And then they started coming. They started coming after them. 50,000 horsemen, 200,000 footmen and chariots started chasing them down with Pharaoh on their heels. But God, but God, but God, he said, fear not. See the salvation of the Lord. See, there's something you need to refocus on. We need to see the salvation of the Lord. And he said, these Egyptians that you got entangled with again will be no more. I'm about to open up your seat. See, he said, when you pass through the waters, <laughs> come on. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And he put his rod, which is a type of the cross, into the sea. And they walked through on dry ground. I don't know about you, but I hope they were fit. Because I would have been running through that water to get to the other side. Look, so many times the Lord's speaking. He's speaking to you right now. And the Lord wants you to come and to surrender to him and to give whatever it is that maybe has been bothering you or you've been struggling with. And we stay back there. But God said, I'm just about to open up the sea for you. And we stay back there. For real. If 50,000 horsemen and chariots were on your heel marching through that door right now, I want to know who would be in their seat. Y'all be running out of here. If they just start busting down the walls, God was telling them, look, fear not, I got you. Get over. Go over. Go over. I don't want you entangled in this wilderness any longer. I want you to go over. There's freedom where I'm taking you. There's power where I'm taking you. Then he said, you'll pass not only through the waters, but through the rivers. See, God gave Joshua and told him to go over and possess the land. There's something you as a believer have to possess. It's already yours for the taking. But how many times you wake up in the morning angry and say, I'm just going to sit in this. Look, I, I can speak it because I live it. I'm just going to, you know. And the Lord says, but I've given you land to possess. Cross over the anger and possess peace. Cross over the unforgiveness that has been keeping you bound. Look, it happened. Whatever it is, and it could be some heinous things. We actually had a book reading last night, if I could share a little bit of a testimony, of a woman who actually was given over in marriage at 13 to a 12, to a 20-year-old man, and had four babies by the time she was 18. Think about that. Think about some of your children. 
And you know what she had to do in order to be healed? She had to forgive. She had to forgive. She had to forgive every single person that hurt her physically, sexually, emotionally. It wasn't just one. She had to, and you know what kind of pain and agony that caused? You think we've been through some things? There's somebody next to you that probably have been through worse. And, and, and it can keep, but it can keep you bound. And God said, look, I want to heal you. I want to make you whole. If you hold on to that thing any longer, it will cripple you. I want to change the way that you walk. I want to change your attitude when you get up in the morning. And God said this, when you pass, when you walk through the fire, I will be with you. I just want to read this part. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel 3.27 said this, when they were in the fire. The princes and the governors and the captains and the kings and the counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire, listen to this, the fire had no power. Nor was the hair of their heads singed, and their coats, their coats were not changed. Nor was the smell of fire passed on them. That means that whatever you are going through, it has no power over you. The God in you is greater than every single circumstance that you face. You are his, Naya, if you would come up. Hallelujah. You are his. You are his. Get that in your heart today. You are his. If you've given your heart to him, you are his. And he is not ashamed to be called your God. If y'all would stand with me, please. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is. And it doesn't have to be necessarily sin. It could be something that you are traveling through and you need to come over. <laughs> you want to get to the other side of this thing. It could be something that God, you need God to deliver you from. God is saying to you this morning, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And he doesn't want to just save us once. He wants to save us over and over and over again from every trial that we've been facing. So I want to invite you to this place up here. This is an altar. <laughs> and this is where we say, I heard your word. And I want to receive what the Spirit of God has for me. I want to receive. I want to cross over. I want to pass through. I want to get to the other side of this thing. I want my family to get to the other side of this thing. I want my children to get to the other side of this thing. And I want to possess what God has for me.